Hi, this is Marty Lecklider, the product manager for Leap, with a brief video on an overview of Leap administration. In the video, we'll take a look at the dashboard, user management, configuration, and how Leap admins can provide resources to Leap authors. The dashboard gives Leap admins visibility into all the different apps on the server. When the admin logs in, they see an additional tab which takes them to the dashboard. Here they can search for a particular app by its name or ID. They can look through a list of applications, sort by any of these columns such as last modified, the number of records. They get information on who the administrators are for the app. Now this is my personal setup so it's not too exciting, it's just me. And a status of the app as well as the ability to launch the app, download it, and email the administrator. Any of these apps they can click into and get additional information. Um, they can also export this data to a spreadsheet if they want to track it over time. And there is a REST API to grab this data as well. In addition to the Leap dashboard and starting with Leap version 9.3.8, admins will be able to track users and application usage in Foundry. Next we'll take a look at user management. Leap has four different roles which you can assign membership to and you can do this in the admin configuration page. The first is the administrators so this could be one person or a number of different people. Uh, you have something called the application manager so these are people that can view and edit and manage apps but they can't set any of the configurations in this admin configuration page. And then you have application authors. These are the people that can build Leap apps. They could be everybody in your directory or they could be specific groups where you can then look up the groups or individuals and assign them. Uh, and the same approach is true with application end users. Uh, it could be everybody in the organization or you could assign just uh, particular audiences to the ability to use apps that are built in Leap. And then finally you have the consideration on whether or not you should allow anonymous access. So these are people that uh, are not authenticated through your directory. Next up is configuration. By configuration we essentially mean setting different guardrails, controls, and security items. So in the admin configuration page, you've got the ability to whitelist which domains people building applications can use when they're adding REST services to their applications. You can determine what domains they can iframe content into their applications from. Uh, you've got the ability to turn JavaScript sandboxing on and off. So if you have a scenario where there are many people building applications and you don't necessarily want to trust them, you can restrict the level of JavaScript that they're able to use. Image domain whitelist, so if you want to limit the domains that images can come from, uh, etc. There are a number of configuration settings which you can make outside of the admin configuration page. These include uh, the types and sizes of files that you want to allow application authors to include in the apps they build, as well as the type and size of files that you want to allow for end users of applications to be able to add as attachments. Uh, you can limit the max number of records for retrieving and viewing. Uh, if there's thousands of users on the app, sometimes this can help prevent uh, thrashing of the database. There's a use tab which you can elect not to show if you feel that it's going to expose more than is needed. And you've also got the ability to turn the use of strict CSP, content security policy, on, which is often required in many external facing scenarios. For Leap running on Kubernetes, these additional configurations can be made through the deployment YAML file. So there's different settings that you would add depending on the configuration you want. And then they are installed or applied to your Leap instance through either Helm install or Helm upgrade. You can find details on these configuration properties and more in the Leap documentation. The last topic we'll touch on is providing resources. This comes down to how the Leap admin can provide Leap authors with access to external data 
and services, provide them with custom widgets, custom themes, and templates. Leap admins have the ability via the admin configuration page to create service descriptions for Leap authors to use. As an example, we'll go ahead and we'll create a service description. In this case, we'll build it from a REST URL, a REST API, and we're going to give it the URL. In this case, it's a service that goes out and gets information based on the IP registry API. We have a sample response which is used to determine the outputs of the service. As the admin I can determine which Leap authors can use the service in building the applications as well as which ones can use it in the applications that uh, are generated using this service. Um, and then I can also give the service a name, IP registry. You can give it a longer description if you like, and then you could give it its own catalog entry. We'll call this marketing, and we'll add that and create it. This then allows the Leap author to come in and add service configurations to their app by simply going to the catalog and looking for the catalog entry, which we just created called marketing and they see the IP registry service and the various outputs that they can map to values in their app. Additionally, Leap admins can designate services from Foundry apps to be used in Leap in the same way we just saw with the IP registry service. So in this case, we've specified a Foundry app named Salesforce. We've given the Leap admin config page some information about it. And as a result, it goes ahead and it discovers the services in the Foundry app. So we see get a list of accounts, get a list of products. If we come over to Foundry, we see this app here and we see get a list of accounts and get a list of products. So this enables the Leap Admin to leverage all of the integration capabilities of Foundry, which are, which are great and then expose them to the Leap authors in a controlled manner. The Leap author sees a new entry in the catalog called Salesforce and within it they see the get a list of accounts and get a list of products. Leap admins also have the ability to add custom widgets to the palette for Leap authors to use. They could have existing web components that they want to add or perhaps there's some additional functionality they want to add to the palette for Leap authors to use with specific tasks at hand. The widgets appear like any other Leap widgets to the Leap author. So in this case, the signature widget, we can simply grab it, put it on the canvas, and we can take a look at how it appears in the preview. Other resources the Leap Admin can provide include custom themes. So perhaps there is a standard look for the organization that should be part of the set of themes that users can pick from, or perhaps the default theme, as well as templates. So think of these as sample apps that the user can start off with to customize to achieve their end result. So in summary, we saw how the Leap Admin capabilities provide visibility into the apps on the server and the usage of those apps as well as the users. We saw how the Leap Admin can configure or define who can build and use apps, how they can set different limits and controls, and provide resources to make Leap authors productive. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.